the world of business and the world of environment that too often are viewed as separate worlds and worlds apart um, actually work better when they're worlds together, where there are these interesting intersections of that sort of business mind, that you know, analytical, that finance driven, that entrepreneurial mind can have tremendous impact in the environmental sphere. But the attitude, the excitement, positive sort of, sort of, wait a minute, this is real and this is happening, that part is immediate. Hello, and welcome to season two of Conversations on Climate which I've been leading a series of conversations with experts from around the world exploring the biggest challenge of our time, climate change. This episode is coming to you from the Yale School of Management during the dynamic Yale Clean Energy Conference. Today's episode features a conversation with Robert Klee, a lecturer in the Yale School of the Environment and Managing Director of Clean Energy at the Yale Center of Business and the Environment. With a rich background in government and academia, Robert provides a profound insight into Yale's influential role in climate action, the potential implications of the Inflation Reduction Act, and the trajectory of green policy in the US. He also shares a personal and inspiring perspective on the path to overcoming the climate crisis. This discussion on the intersection of policy, education and sustainable solutions with one of the field's most knowledgeable voices is a conversation that you just won't want to miss. Well, thank you so much for uh, inviting us, us here to this wonderful conference that you are organizing. Um, what, it's about 600 odd people that have turned up over the last couple of days. I know, it's, it's uh, amazing and the growth year over year in this conference and the interest in it and is just been phenomenal. Yeah. So, um, great to have you here. Absolutely, I'm delighted to be here. Thank, thank you very much for spending the time to talk to us for a few minutes outside. I know you're incredibly busy. Um, so the, the, this, this conference, it's um, the, essentially the, the Clean Energy Conference, but its kind of core uh, purpose is to bring the uh, financially employing cl of clean energy um, students and alumni together. Um, and I could tell us a little bit ab about the course um, as, a, as a powerful collaboration between the School of Management and the School of the Environment. Yeah, so our, our Financing Deploying Clean Energy Certificate was really one of Yale's first forays into online education where we could find ways to bring our amazing Yale faculty to practitioners literally in the job that we and help both either give them that information that they can take on the job from a Thursday live session with me and use it on Tuesday or if they're in the job but they want to be in that other job or they want to transition to a different part of the energy space or the finance space or the consulting space giving them the sort of tools to do that switch in their career and motivate them to sort of be part of this amazing sort of expanding world of clean energy deployment so that's the spirit of it is getting the best of what Yale has to offer in the hands of people who can use it immediately and be really impactful uh, on clean energy and climate. Fantastic. And it, it's very great um, and powerful collaboration between the Schools of Management and the, the School of the Environment, uh, CBA. Um, you have um, also launched a world leading uh, joint program for the MBA. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? What makes that special? What makes that unique? So um, again, the Center for Business and Environment at Yale, CBA, that sort of organization that's at the heart of that joint degree program is sort of recognized that the world of business and the world of environment that too often are viewed as separate worlds and worlds apart um, actually work better when they're worlds together, where there are these interesting intersections of that sort of business mind, that you know, analytical, that finance driven, that entrepreneurial mind can have tremendous impact in the environmental sphere on climate you know, clearly clean energy deployment, obviously, but in closed loops, in food systems, in our fashion world, in all these places where our economic and social activities have the potential to be for good or for ill, the joint degree and the people in that are really about focusing on ways that it could be for good and where it's, that you can really leverage all of these wonderful sort of tools of the business financial world to benefit the environment, to create a more sustainable environment. And you get faculty and students who are really passionate now about that intersection, which is really part of that 
working world as well, where leading companies recognize that to attract their workforce and retain them, you kind of have to have as part of your mission statement that your mission is for good and has those elements of sustainability built in because that's what our students and particularly this generation of students really want. Absolutely. And how do you encourage the, the crossover and the, the, the cross-pollination of, of skills and interests between, between faculty and staff um, between the two schools? So it's, um, some of it's organic, the sort of, the folks who gravitate to this space are necessarily sort of collegial, collaborative, both at the sort of academic and the faculty space. These are these networks of people that really find each other and collaborate on research projects or collaborate on bringing a speaker, or collaborate on a conference like the one we're at now. And that's happening at the sort of, the creation of the sort of academic sort of sort of uh, opportunities and classes and the like. And then amongst the students, it's really from below. They're demanding this. They really want this. They're asking for more of those crossover classes, more opportunities for, a, I have in my you know climate policy and perspectives class that I teach over at the School of the Environment, I have you know a good chunk of it. I think about 20% are school of management students who want to just know about the climate space because it's going to help them when they're out in the business world or in the finance world or in private equity or whatever they're doing. And that's really part of Yale's sort of philosophy in a lot of ways is that you're here at this amazing institution, take advantage of it, all of it, <laughs> anywhere uh, in this place. And they're usually, they'll give you credit for it. If you can okay. find your way to a <laughs> class, they'll, they'll make it work in whatever sort of curriculum that you're supposed to have. Fantastic. So, um, got the, the FTC program, got the joint MBA. What's next for Yale to be trying to leverage its, its, its unique position and skill sets uh, for, for impact? So I think um, a couple of things. One, we're, you know, in the, we haven't talked about the undergraduate community, which is this really amazing group of, you know, sort of new sort of entrance into the higher education space. They're all over our classes. They're in our entrepreneurial sort of areas. They're inventing things. They're creating companies. So the undergrads come into this conversation as well. It's part of what we do in the clean energy space through our clean energy collaborative, where the Center for Business and Environment at Yale realizes we have these centers of you know academics and faculty that are teaching in energy related topics all over Yale and we create this platform where all of the students can find each other undergrad professional and our FDCE alums who are out there in the world as well and we're making those sort of multi-layered connections uh, as so that's one area where we're kind of bringing all of Yale including the the undergrads uh, into the mix as well the other things that are next, I mean, we're uh, continuing in this world of clean energy uh, um, and online learning with our, our new, uh, new to launch uh, uh, early in the coming year, our uh, clean and equitable uh, energy development class. So that's SEED program. So again, thinking about particularly in the US context, with the Inflation Reduction Act, with Justice 40, which is requiring that the benefits from all of these new federal monies flowing to clean energy, going to communities that have been too often left behind, we view that as a nice opportunity to get those communi communities sort of in the mix and understanding what it takes to actually access this tsunami in some ways of federal funds that are coming and hopefully can be taken advantage of in a really positive way by communities that are looking to deploy clean energy. So we're both engaging across all of Yale, but we're also going to continue our outreach to new segments of the working and professional world as well, which is super exciting. So uh, you mentioned the Inflation Reduction Act. Yes. Yeah. A um, oh, huge game changer for the U.S. Yeah. And do, so one year in, uh, how do you assess its impact or is it too early to assess? So it. Um, already is having impact, particularly for the parts that are, are sort of self-actuating the, the tax incentives in particular. So developers that already had projects in the pipeline or are thinking about new projects, they see that sort of tax incentive and its new flexibility mechanisms to allow direct pay for municipalities and nonprofits. So they're, and they're seeing that 10 plus year sort of uh, runway on it as well. So all of that is just, let's go and let's go big you know and for the projects that were already 
along the way, they're getting supercharged and excited. There are new projects that are coming behind that. There are other parts that are going to need some deployment development. There are grants that have been rolling out. There's the um, the projects that uh, the Environmental Protection Agency are doing in their Greenhouse Gas Reduction Fund. That was a big push for a lot of entities like green banks and other sort of states to apply into those competitive pools of money. There was a lot of flurry of activity to both get those stood up and then now they're getting to the point where a lot of people have applied and then we'll see early next year the deployment starting to happen there. But the attitude, the excitement, positive sort of, sort of, wait a minute, this is real and this is happening. That part is immediate. That had that sort of immediate sort of like what we can actually do this and the federal government is going to come alongside us. And, and I come from uh, a very state level perspective where we always felt that we were out on our own or we were working with California and New York. I was the commissioner of energy and environment in Connecticut. So needing to, you know, cobble together partners within your region or within, you know, neighboring states where you're sometimes competitors with them as well. I think it's such an amazing new world to have that federal government as your partner in this endeavor, which I think is in and of itself a, a game changer that has been really positive. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a really good message. Um, you know, the likes of like John Kerry is very positive that regardless of the outcome of the election uh, next year, that, uh, that you know, the Inflation Reduction Act will, be, will remain standing strong. Do you, do, you, do you agree with that or do you have any? I tend to. I think it was intentionally designed um, kind of in some of the ways like the military spending we do, other sorts of spending, other sort of large programs. It was meant to sort of say, no, this is actually the sort of standard that everyone uh, expects and that everyone can participate in, that everyone can benefit from. The constituencies of who is actually getting to participate here cut across any and all party lines, any and all geographic sort of boundaries. There is the potential to deploy clean energy now most everywhere in the country and they're seeing the benefits in terms of emissions reductions, cleaner air, jobs created, all those sorts of things really translate I think on the ground. So on the political landscape Yes, there are, unlike most other parts of the world, climate clean energy tends to be a more partisan issue in the U.S. than it should be, and the solutions seem to divide folks. But I think part of the Inflation Reduction Act was to actually lean into the elements of clean energy deployment that are kind of basic, that it saves folks money, that it employs people in jobs, that it sort of delivers on those things that are climate agnostic. They don't have to be part of a that narrative if you don't want them to be. Now, in states like Connecticut, it is part of the narrative. It is part of our goals to achieve, you know, zero emissions in our electric sector by, you know, um, I believe our, our goal is now um, in the 2040 range to be a complete sort of across our entire economy decarbonized. I mean, that's aggressive sort of, you know, state level policy that is now enabled by the federal but the federal is going to work anywhere. Even if that isn't your state's policy, it'll still help your clean energy industry in your state. Uh, even if you don't really want it to, it's still going to do it. <laughs> Great. And if you could uh, write a piece of policy and uh, have, it, have it signed off on the desk in the morning, uh, what would it be? If there's one, one, one thing you could put in place. So one thing... So I don't know if it's necessarily a policy, but one thing I would want, uh, if I could wave a magic wand, I would have people understand the value and importance of their public utility commission, which is an often overlooked, particularly in the United States, it's often an agency that folks don't even know it exists. <laughs> and yet their role in the deployment of clean energy and the siting of new transmission lines and in the you know, acceptance of new rules and new structures and new ways to regulate and cause their utilities to actually get on board with the clean energy sort of system is vital, is critical. We need people in those jobs, in those roles who are excited about this transition to a new clean energy future. And I want both those commissioners excited about, we have some, don't get me wrong, there are some who are tremendous and doing really innovative stuff, but I also want people to recognize the importance of those places and demand more of them and demand better from them um, and maybe even participate in those uh, processes and in those uh, arcane dockets that are approving things at that state level. Yeah, that's, 
I tell you, if I had have had a hundred guesses, what were you going to say on that? That would not that have would been not in there. But, it, no. but, it, but it's, it's a fantastic answer. It really is a fantastic <laughs> answer. So yeah, yeah, appreciate that. Okay, so one last question for me. Sure. We have um, the whole space we work in. It is, uh, it is uh, an existential crisis. Like it is, it is like a, a, a fight for you know, the, the maintenance of life as we know it. If you let it um, you know, sink into you too much, <laughs> it can be pretty, you know, it can be, it can be difficult. Um, what gives you hope? So what gives me hope, and I, I'd like to borrow something from Christiana Figueres, um, who called this stubborn optimism. So um, I will call myself a stubborn optimist in this space, as, as she is and as she sort of recognized. That doesn't mean that it's easy. Yeah doesn't mean that it's not going to require some hard work or a, you know, a real sort of leaning into the challenge. So that's first where I start from, that you need to come at this with that attitude that it's going to take a lot of effort and not just your effort, but you need to bring along five friends and those five friends need to belong five friends as well. Now, what gives me hope is that I teach here at the Yale School of the Environment and I also get to work with folks here at the Yale School of Management, the law school, the Jackson School, undergrads. I see in this next generation of students and future leaders that passion for this topic. This is their sort of topic that they know is so essential to their future and the future of our planet. And they have really embrace this sort of opportunity to be the change maker and to really take whatever they can out of this tremendous institution of Yale and apply it to that problem. And that gives me great hope because these are, these folks and the folks that they interact with and their friends and the communities that they go back to that they want to go work with and want to lift up with them. Um, all of that gives me hope, both the folks here at Yale folks I get to work with in our financing and deploying clean energy certificate program, that sort of network and that intersecting and overlapping network of people committed to this. I'm stubbornly optimistic we're going to get it solved. Okay. Well, thank you very much for all of your work in getting those change makers out into the world, doing the things that need to be done to try and solve this, this, this problem. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. Okay. Thank you so much. It's real pleasure.